Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Barcelona, Spain for theCUBE, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the advanced extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is the esteemed Jim Gantier, global vice president of HP, marketing for HP servers and all things uh, uh, servers and networking and storage and convergence. You have uh, your, your fingers in all that, but mainly the servers. CUBE alumni, we're a big <laughs> fan of you, you your work. You've been on the queue. I don't know how many times you've been on the queue. I've lost count. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> Good to Welcome. see you. Welcome. Same here. Um, nice great to see you, Jim. You know, but, by the way, isn't this like our our spot for the inaugural event? Yes, this is our inaugural Cube event. Our first ever Cube uh, HP Discover was here in Barcelona. Jim, you were on. We're all the top guys. Our were first on. European Cube. First European right. Cube. We had a little power problem. Barcelona. Remember, Dave. Uh, Oh, uh, we didn't bring the right adapters, you know, but we'll fix that now. Live <laughs> and SD up and cards running. that I left at the restaurant, we had to go back and get, you remember that? Yeah. TMI, TMI. <laughs> <laughs> we're about continuous improvement, and that's what it's all about. You know, so the Cube now is full operation. And we're you proud. were there when, Jim? I you was there, there I was when, there when the Cube was born in EMEA. <laughs> now the Cube is big, thanks to, thanks to all the support and the content, but you know, it's, it's about the tech athletes like yourself, and, and again, you, you, to us, we love talking to you, because you're a tech athlete, you're working hard every day, you're working hard, you're making things happen, and you have know all the facts, know the numbers, so we, let's get right into it. So okay. give us a quick update on what's going on in your world. Uh, servers, uh, you guys are big business. Uh, we had Antonio Neri on, the new senior vice president running the organization. Yep. What's new? Give us some of the latest facts, figures, inside the numbers, market share, data, give us what, what, what's new. Sure, so a couple of things are going on with us. Uh, needless to say that when it comes to HP servers, we're still basically taking the tactic of our mission in life is real simple. We're going to go deliver the right compute for the right workload at the right economics every single time. So when our engineers and marketeers wake up every day, they're focused on our customers' biggest problems. And as you probably heard Meg talk about, you know, there's this massive new uh, change going on in the industry driven by the four mega trends. Pick your favorite, social, mobile, cloud, big data. So what ends up happening is if you look at the exponential growth that's going to occur, in order to keep up with that, Fundamentally, things have to change. Present course and speed no longer sustainable. So, as a result of that, the folks have come up with a huge list of innovations. When I say innovations, not just the next spin of the server, but things that are really changing the density, the cost, the energy, the admin efficiency, in fundamentally unique, differentiated, and sustainable ways. Uh, as you can probably tell by all the energy here, and you guys are probably, what, 50 or 60 feet away from the petting zoo, probably 75 feet away from the pod, we're full. I mean, it has literally been like cheek to cheek, elbow to elbow. The customers are interested. They're, they're highly interested, and the reason why they're interested is because we're helping them solve some of their biggest issues. I mean, one of the things that's really nice about mine and Antonio's job is we probably get to talk to, you know, 100 to 200 CIOs a year, and the good news is we keep hearing the same things. I'm being told I have to do more with less. My budgets are going down. My SLAs are getting harder. Oh, and by the way, I've got all of these new things that are starting to pop up. I've got big data. I've got BYOD. So let, me, let me read to you the trending items from our, our social media command center at sure. SiliconANGLE. Number one, HP Discover. This is, these are hashtags now. These are actual conversation groups. HP Discover, HP, no problem. Mm -hmm. Here we go, personalization. Marketing, moon sh HP Moonshot, Big Data Cloud Security, HP Convergence, The Cube, App Transformation. So let's take a few of those out. Personalization, HP Moonshot, really the top product trending. Yeah, so so Ma Meg made, mentioned it in her keynote. She's a big fan of Moonshot. What's, what's, why is everyone <laughs> up, up in arms about, about Moonshot? What's, what's the um, big deal? Up in arms, no, in, a good way. in love, yeah, in okay. love <laughs> with. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, is that uh, when you look at what we've been able to do with Moonshot, right? Everybody normally does the next turn of the server. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, every 14 to 18 months, we'll add more memory, more I.O., and we'll have the next uh, silver box. What the team decided to do, because, you know, as I mentioned before, present course and speed is unsustainable, we took a step back and said that if we were going to, instead of say, here's a general purpose server that we put something on, what if we were to define, and it's one of Bill Vecti's top priorities, a software-defined server? Don't start with, here's the hardware, let's go add software on top. 
go understand the software, go understand the workload, and then design the perfect amount of compute, spindles, I.O., MEM, and everything else for it. And when you do that, you get a dramatically different set of business results. So when you look at Moonshot, right, 89% less energy. When you look at the, the uh, density levels, it's great because one rack of Moonshot is equal to eight to nine racks of standard servers. Now, just think about that for a second. How much less footprint? How much less energy? How much less admin time? How much less updates? All of that are reasons why folks are you know, loving Moonshot and why the Moonshot b guru bar, or as we call it, the launch pad, has got folks all over the place. So I got to ask the question that everyone talks about, um, not directly, but indirectly through some of the trends. Uh, what's the difference between a server? Hell, I'm just going to buy open compute, I'm going to buy off the shelf, because what I want to do is I want to scale out on commodity hardware. Um, okay. And now we've used the term industry standard hardware, and you guys have been specific. No, no, it's industry standard, not commodity. Kind of nuancing the difference between commodity being like really low end parts, industry standard being made by HP. Okay, I get that. So talk about the differentiation of HP, okay? Because your supply chain's solid, your manufacturing's solid. I'm the customer, hey, I've been buying servers, do I really need to go with HP? I've mean, got all this other stuff, I can buy all this stuff. Everyone's building their own. What? So, so, so you know what, I'm just going to like look for the cheaper alternative price and open, compute. So, great question, and, John. Yeah. But, here, but here's the only problem with the folks who go down that path. Commodity servers give you commodity results. So when you asked about what's the nuance between what we do and what others do, for me it's really simple. We like to innovate on top of industry standards. And that gives us two or three things that separate HP from the pack. The first one is we have the world's largest supply chain. So, you know, we buy, I won't give you the number, but let's just say, double digit billion dollars worth of components. Oh, it's north of 50 billion, I've said in the cube. Right? Okay, fair yeah. enough, so, so you cited it, I didn't. I didn't want to give away something from our supply chain. But the net is, is that we've got that economies of scale. But we don't just stop there. What we do is, is we actually take that size, scale, and speed, and we innovate on top of it on behalf of our customers. We innovate with things such as sea of sensors. Okay, great, nice technology, but what that really translates into from a business result is that we're helping our customers reduce the biggest CapEx and OpEx issue problem they have in the data center. Power and cooling, which is why we've got the pod. We innovate on top of that when it comes to things such as our integrated lights out. Admins spend way too much time doing maintenance and, and upgrades as opposed to spending their time on innovation and helping to drive better business results. So what we like to do, back to your nuance yeah, question well, is- I'll just write that using open source software. Okay, great. When you do that, you'll have the same thing as everybody else. Folks are not looking for everybody else's answer. They're looking for things that will give him that much more incremental yeah. improvement. Because you brought up the, um, and I'll use the words, hyperscale or service provider class customer. For that particular class of customer, Inches matter, watts matter, small details matter, because when you're at that size of scale, the smallest number that you can save turns into multi-million dollars worth of savings. So, to answer your point, yes, we are, are formerly known as the industry standard server group, but whether you ask myself or okay. even the folks at Intel, well, great. we I, innovate on top. I wanted to get that out there, because you're very articulate about some of these very specific questions, and that is the, the kind of the broad, not specific comment, no one's saying that about HP, but I can see the vibe and scale out open source is a big trend. Okay, so the next question I have to ask, you, that you're qualified to answer, <laughs> is um, Moonshot, oh my God, why would they build that? That's a different, it's going to cannibalize their server business, and that's going to reduce their margins, and go, oh my God, it's going to kill, so don't ship the product. Uh, so where are you going to capture the margin? The software, I mean, so explain to well, folks, well, isn't so that a dangerous product? No, and, and the reason why it's not dangerous is, again, we take the tactic of, look, you know, frankly, we invented the x86 server market back in 1989. We were the first ones to do rack-based servers. It is the role of an industry leader to advance to the next level. So instead of us being afraid of Moonshot, we're actually embracing it. Now, when I talk about embracing it, it's not just us. If you look at um, what we refer to internally as HP on HP, and there's actually a booth over here, HP.com is running right now on a couple of so Moonshot you're not platforms. Afraid. You're not afraid. You're bringing it on. Absolutely not. No, it is our job as the leaders to help point to where the industry is going and help do that transformation. Right, so, so square this circle. So you've got, you've got this huge portfolio, right? Yep. Um, now, when you have that huge portfolio, you're going to have overlap. Now, you'd rather have overlap than gaps, but you've still got to manage the overlap. You've got to figure out the segmentation. You've got to price it right. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that and how, as market forces change, you mentioned cloud, mobile, social, big data. Yep. As those things change and affect new d d uh, dynamics in the marketplace, how do you rationalize 
some of that segmentation and some of that overlaps. It's got to be a complex problem. Uh, it, it is a quasi-complex problem, but the good news is, is that we've got a very clear point of view on how we're going to go address that. So as you well know, we have multiple product families. We have Rack, we have Tower, we have Blades, we have Density Optimize, and we've got Moonshot, which is taking off really well. And then on top of that is we have multiple uh, market segments. So what we do for the SMB customer, aka the microserver, is something that is built particularly for that class of market, that class of workload. Because frankly, doctor, lawyer, dentist, real estate agents, they're going to be interested in things such as customer management and payroll. For the next class, which is enterprise, where we're starting to see workloads such as virtualization, such as big data, and then even uh, IT modernization, which cuts across, we have multiple products that allow us to do that. And then for service provider, that's where we have what I'll refer to as particular classes of product like our SL2500, our SL6500, something you guys helped us with, which was the SL4500 series, lovingly known as Argos when we first announced it. And that's another product that is rapidly taking off because we look at product class, we look at type of customer, we look at market segment, and then we design particular product based on those workloads and those particular segments. Now, I want to ask you another question on storage. So one of the sub-level disruptions in the marketplace is flash. For 15 years, we saw storage function move out of the server, mm -hmm. and of course, it took revenue with it to, to the external SAN, for good reason, right? You had to share it, you had to protect it, you know, back it up, everything else. It seems to be moving back now. You got this persistent device, this persistent medium, called Flash, mm -hmm. now coming back into the server. Correct. What kind of opportunities does that, that create, both from the standpoint of customers, supporting customers, new applications, et cetera, and how does it affect your market opportunity? So you, you brought up a really good point, and a lot of this is back to the whole convergence piece, because you're right, at one point everything had basically split off, and now we're starting to bring them back it actually gives us opportunity in two spots. The first one is, is that with Flash, customers can get dramatic improvements in performance for a certain amount of, uh, I guess we'll call it incremental price. And again, back to your great segmentation question, if I'm a financial services customer, milliseconds equal millions. They're willing to pay for that kind in class. If I'm a particular type of PubSec customer, I'm willing to do that. So what Flash allows us to do is that by actually having the memory closer to the processor, closer to the actual I.O. complex, the bottom line is, is you get to do things much faster, higher levels of performance, and when performance matters, that allows us to basically deliver. But the other fun part is, and if you take a look over at the storage area, is you're now starting to see not just the flash move back into servers, but the servers move into flash slash storage. One of the things that's really nice is that if you take a, a look over in the uh, storage area, you'll actually see a combination of ProLiance that now have VSA, or basically the virtual SAN appliance. What that allows our team, which would be the server team, and our, our HP storage team to do, is that now only we can uniquely offer a 50% reduction in cost. We can actually help them get maybe a 70 to 80% um, reduction in terms of from a TCO perspective, because we're now putting virtualized storage appliances built into every, every, every uh, uh, ProLiant that we're going to be shipping. So the bottom line is, is you see Flash coming back to us, and you see us actually moving over to uh, storage. So that's another case to me anyway, Jim, of let the market decide. If the market wants to go that way, fine. If the market wants its storage inside servers, we got that covered too. Now, so let's look forward a little bit. It seems mm -hmm. to me that you hear a lot of us talk about uh, Memristor, uh, yeah. extensions of memory with non-volatile RAM. Uh, you could, you know, there are those talking about maybe Flash, you guys yep. are obviously saying, saying Memristor is the way to go, but nonetheless, you've got this, again, this persistent resource that creates this larger pool of, of, of main memory, changes the way in which application developers think, and it creates a, a challenge and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. the, the, it both being that now I want to connect across servers. Correct. Okay, so I used to go out to the SAN to do that, of course it's spinning disk, it's slow, if I can do that over some high speed interconnect, so, what do you see as that opportunity? I mean, it seems to be a software problem, a, a globally distributed, you know, a, a non-volatile memory uh, sharing yeah. pool. Uh, really exciting con concept. Yep. Are you, uh, who's working on it? I know you guys are working on oh, it. We're I'm definitely sure working on it. People. <laughs> what do you, how do you see that changing and what's the opportunity? And we're talking, you know, five years, 10 years out. Well, well, but me, interesting me, stuff going on in the lab. No, 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 uh, great part. When I say we're working on it, we're working on it in conjunction with our HP storage division team. We're also working on it with our networking team. Mm. So let me answer that in, I'll call it, three striations. I'll give you a short term, 
I'll give you a medium term, and then I'll give you what we believe is the ultimate end point. So short term, I mean, a simple scenario is something that we talked about here at the show. It's called Project Kraken. Uh, you and I both know that if I've got a large database, and by the way, this is an example of the HP partnership ecosystem, us helping to accelerate uh, the industry. But if I've got a partnership with SAP, they were clearly on stage talking about how by taking memory and large pools of it, now instead of having to have a request made for the data, the data extracted, the data manipulated, the data put back, and then you can actually read reports, by putting that all in memory, dramatically faster time, dramatically less cost, and it also frees up or makes the admin's lives a little bit, or I should say a lot bit, uh, I guess we'll call it easier. That's an example of short term. Medium term. And it reduces some of your database licenses. Um, I wasn't <laughs> going to touch that one, but okay. I'm going to stay away from that kryptonite. The, from a medium term perspective, what we can also do, and you started to see us go down this path, is we already have Flash. We've already got things such as faster I.O. One perfect example of that is you can now have a scenario where you've got solutions, and within those solutions, if I've got the server and the storage construct and I've got them tied to Virtual Connect, now instead of having you know, about an extra $150,000 or $180,000 worth of stuff, I basically have four wires. So that's another HP unique advantage. And then ultimately, you gave the vision that uh, Martin Fink's been painting, and maybe it's about three to four years from now. When I've got non-volatile memory, when I'm using light instead of copper to do the transmission, when I've got a management construct like OneView that's looking at my server, my storage, my networking, and my services, and I can dynamically manage all of those, the life of a uh, CIO or every member of their staff becomes you know, a really good place to be. Well, the apps change too, right? I mean, the, they have the, to. the applications now go so much more, f f so much faster and can deal with an order of magnitude more data. Correct, which by the way, benefits them because that now becomes a unique business advantage that they can turn around to help in their business results, be it revenue, gross margin, or OpEx. Jim, I got to talk about the numbers. Sure. I, you know, I love talking about market share. <laughs> so let's talk about performance. <laughs> what, what, how are you guys doing on the, on the business side? How's the business performance? Um, you know, I always, Dave knows this market share stuff. He used to work at IDC. I don't, I don't, <laughs> get, I don't get the segmentation. So are you guys number one? Which market? Is it global? Is it US, North America? I mean, there's always different versions. It seems like IDC seems to make slides for every single, everyone uh, seems to be number one at something. I mean, they, they, if you narrow the market small enough, you can always be number one at something. Jack Welch. Can you, can Jack Welch? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the Cube is number one at live event They're broadcasting. <laughs> there's no, uh, no competition, okay. Um, seriously though, what is the status of the market share? Uh, happy, to, happy to share give that. Give us the open Happy to share that. Yeah. So as you probably well know, not that I want to you know, talk about all the methodologies, IDC just came out with their numbers on December 4th. The answer is very simple. We're number one globally. We're number one globally in terms of all of x86. This is server shipments. This is server shipments through 3Q, calendar 3Q of this year. Now, the reason why you see the big smile on my face is because somebody else has said they were going to be number one and we've taken uh, a lot of, I guess we'll call it pleasure in making sure that we deny them that every single quarter. But kidding aside, uh, a couple of things made us really happy. Obviously, we've kept our number one for the last 70 some odd quarters position, but what was That's really worldwide good- That's worldwide number. That is a worldwide number. You haven't shifted number. to like a North America or um, you've been well, worldwide? We, we, do, we do have that, but again, if I'm- But the 77 I, number of consecutive quarters. 70, yes. 70. Who's mm -hmm. number one in Nebraska? That's what no, no, <laughs> it is a global <laughs> number, x86 shipments, 70 period. consecutive quarters. You're yep. saying 70 consecutive quarters of worldwide global number one market. As long as IDC has had a tracker in place, we have led the industry. And by the way, I'm not saying that as a bragging scenario. I'm saying no, no, that that's customer. No, no, it, it's an indicator of what customers value and who they're rewarding. Now, I'll double click one step down. You asked about form factors, right? Um, in Blades, we continue to be number one and we have more share than the next three combined. And I won't cite who their names are, but you can guess. But what really put a smile on our face is the fact that we got number one in the density optimized area and we took that away from the other Texas server team. Okay, so we know who that so is. So I want to follow up on that. So the other thing, I don't know if it was in this report, but I know IDC just released its report on ODMs. It started, it started to track they, ODMs. They started and, to track And them. it was a relatively large number. I mean, I want to say 15% maybe? Uh, so no, actually it's about it? 11. Okay, well, maybe revenue-wise is lower, right? Maybe, uh, I'm, revenue thinking, maybe wise, I'm thinking units. Yeah, right. You might be thinking units, uh, yeah, but then so. again, that impacts AUPs. Right, so. absolutely. So, so just when you thought, you know, okay, consolidation, we figured out you know, how to compete in this consolidated world, now you got this ODM piece. A lot of people thought that they were just going to go away. They don't uh, no. seem to be going away. No, 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 no. Um, 
So what do you see as the impact of, of, of ODMs and, and how is HP addressing that market segment? So we take all competition seriously, but the impact of the ODMs has been that there's a small group of them. And by the way, when we say ODMs, it's not eight group, it's seven or eight. So when you make the comparison, it's us versus seven or eight others. But having said yeah, that, right. there are some ODMs that have decided that they would like to sell direct and they normally sell to direct uh, large hyperscale companies and they do that with a particular type and particular build. There are others who basically go down the open compute path. The beauty is we do that also. So the net is, is if you like an open compute path or an open compute partnership type system, we have that. We'll make that available to you. But the difference though is that when you do do that, back to your very salient point, you get the same thing that everybody else has got. We don't believe that um, you know, giving you the, what everybody else has got, we want to help you with the biggest issues that you've got, and that's where the HP innovation, the HP intellectual property, pulls us away from the pack. So some of your customers, let's take this example, large financial services, like the biggest, biggest, biggest financial services organizations have started to talk a little bit to us about, you know, we're thinking about maybe going direct to the ODMs. When you have that, hey Jim, we're thinking about doing that. Why, sh why shouldn't we do that? Uh, for a couple of reasons. The first of all is, if you do go down that path, what you'll get are standard answers. If I happen to be a high frequency trading company, that is not the answer I'm going to be looking for. If I, uh, well no, because again. No, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I, so that's, a, that's one example. I surprised by yeah. that conversation. Uh, if you want to say you want to do something as simple as your front end website, yeah, sure, you can go get the off-the-shelf ODM things that you get from anybody in Taipei, or you can get Moonshot and dramatically lower your cost, your density, or improve your densities, and uh, get rid of a lot of the complexity in the system. Or then, uh, last but not least, just to stay on the financial services one, if I want to have a whole bunch of traders with uh, remote or hosted desktops, I could go and get everybody individual ones tied to servers and get the typical uh, virtualized desktop, or I could get the new Converge System 100, which we just announced with that team, and not only can I give you 6x the uh, frame rate, but I can do it at a 44% lower TCO. So yes, if they want to go down that path, well, commodity talk, product talk, will give you a commodity answer. Let's talk TCO for a minute. You mentioned that. I'm just going to just quickly get this in before the segment ends. Sure. Um, at, our, at our crowd chat, we had crowdchat.net slash Gardner DC around Gardner Data Conference. The, the top vote getter, the crowd captain, was Dan uh, Tertian from ServiceNow okay. on a comment and said, cloud and consumerization fundamentally change ITSM, IT service management. IT's new role, enabler of cloud, compelling technology experience, no longer traffic cop. Legacy tools are obsolete because role is obsolete. Yeah. So, you know, you guys are adding new technology and automation. Service management, software, manageability has been, always been a big part of HP. What is the new role of uh, service management in a bigger picture? As people look at the consumerization, service cataloging, the big trend in IT, what's going on with your group around that innovation? Is there anything new you can share? Or? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, let's see, probably about a month ago, we came out with something called HP OneView. And if you look at HP OneView, HP OneView is basically simple, it's fast, and it's extremely efficient. We all know that the world is going to end up going to either a software-defined data center or absolutely a converged infrastructure. But what you don't want- Or wanna, both. Or both, yeah. As a matter of fact, it's kind of like, you know, I remember the arguments, uh, let's see, with people last year, public, private, or hybrid? The answer is hybrid every single time. So, yeah. yes, <laughs> agree with you. So the bottom line is when you look at something like HP OneView, you should demand the capability of being able to dynamically move things back and forth within a resource pool. You should have the capability of having your teams collaborate because ultimately, yes, he's right. A CIO has moved from a service provider to actually being a partner to the line of business owner. Yeah. They're actually helping now drive business results and they're being told like to everybody make cloud, else. To make this seamless, if I buy a server, yep. I know it's a, it's, a, it's a unique device in my data center. It's one of, one of a big part of other servers. Mm -hmm. When I go to the cloud, it's just one of the bigger pools. Correct. So it has to be seamless. You guys provide that? Yeah, actually we, we do. So we provide it in two sorts of fashions. One is, is you can buy that offering in cloud system and um, you probably saw the celebratory uh, report. We've now had thousands of, or we've crossed the thousands of customer mark on cloud system. Again, the reason for that is because of the seamless, easy integration between the server, the storage, the networking, and to some extent even the services. Yeah, if I want to now move something over, I just basically tag it, I drag and drop, and then ultimately I can go. Nice. It's simple, it's easy, and, it, and uh, it gives you a business result and differentiator. I want to get one more question in, because I just, sure. I, you know, all the, all the hard questions, all the, all the knockoffs you knock down, you give, and, you, and you give some great, 
great snippets. I as love well. what I do. We got, we got some good tweet. We got we got John. We got milli, milliseconds equals millions. We got commodity surface yield commodity results. I mean, it's, it's a <laughs> tweet machine. So we try to get another one out of you here. So, uh, you said uh, I, we take all competitors seriously, and yeah. I believe that. One of the competitors that is a little different, a little different animal, of course, is Amazon, right? So you got a company that's going to do what three and a half to four billion dollars this year in compute, storage, and you know, networking, and a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a new animal. Yeah. Um, and it's taken away market share. It's growing, mm -hmm. you know, at whatever, 50, 60% yeah. a year, where the market's sort of bumping along at single digit growth, or maybe it's flat. So how do you compete against that? So this is one where the power of HP is how you compete against that, or as we call it, one HP. The server team in and of itself couldn't pull that off, but if you combine the collective firepower of the server team, the storage team, the networking team, and some great work coming out of uh, Sar Galil's shop, who is responsible for all of our cloud uh, capabilities, we're the only team on the planet that can actually offer up a converged cloud. Yeah. So here's one of the downfalls. I'm sure you know, that company in Seattle probably does really wonderful things, but the problem is, is that if you put your assets there, they're there. With us, along with a couple of uh, other innovations we're putting in place, we have a converged cloud. If you want to have a hybrid cloud, you want to have some things you know, back on your private side, or you want to put some things out there, we let you see all of those assets simultaneously. You can still kind of operate as a quasi-resource pool, and the other beauty is, is that if you run out of capacity through certain partners, we can allow you to burst and actually get additional capabilities. So it's not a, I have infrastructure, I'm going to go try to monetize or amortize as much as I can. Ours is a real strategy that takes the collective power and the collective intellectual property of HP and helps CIOs deliver in a much better business results oriented That's fashion. a great answer. You do have some rock stars. We had Sar Gilai on uh, yesterday in the queue. Ah, He's so unbelievable. You've heard the story. He's Bethany He's is on. on. And, and you know, John, for a while we talked about it. Early on, it was like HP Cloud. Yeah, they're committed to cloud, but what do they got? And then and guys like Sar came in and really. Sar turned it around. Built He's that awesome. Out. Yeah. He's, He's he, uh, good. Let's just say that when he decides to go do something, stuff gets done. He's, yeah. he's <laughs> got a strong personality, that's for sure. Um, look, at, we, uh, we got a, we got a break here. Jim, thanks so much for coming on no, the no, Cube. No, no, my pleasure. We really appreciate you, your energy. <laughs> uh, it's like <laughs> dynamic, it's very engaging. Uh, getting great comments on Twitter already. Thanks so much. And again, thanks for all your support. You've been on so many times. You've been, you bring your A game every mm -hmm. time. I got to say, you bring it, you help us, and you share knowledge with, the, with, with the audience. Really appreciate it. You guys do a great so job. So give you the final word. Put the bumper sticker on this show as the car is leaving Barcelona. Um, what does it say? Uh, let's see, bumper sticker on the car leaving Bar Barcelona. HP is back with a vengeance and out to help customers in ways that none of our competitors can. That's awesome, that's an <laughs> SUV actually, bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Texas, <laughs> and I do drive a Suburban. <laughs> that's beautiful, okay, Jim Gontier. What did our Vi parents do without Suburban? <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> Jim Gontier live here inside theCUBE, global vice president of HP servers, uh, great CUBE alum. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more guests here. Day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, exclusive coverage, HP Discover. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Thanks guys. Hey, thanks.